everyone. It's Miss Karen. We've been working on the letter Y, and we're kind of down to our last three letters of the alphabet. So it's it kind of hard to find, you know, books that like focus on the letter X or a Y or a Z. Um, so I actually found um, this, I have a, a highlights book here. These are really great. Um, they make them for like uh, pre-K kindergarten level up to like, I don't know, middle grades, four, five, six. And then, you know, so different levels of reading. They have some nice little stories. I think this would be um, probably like for the six, seven, eight year olds. Actually, no, that looks like it'd be more, you know, yeah, third grade, fourth grade reader there. Um, so stories, it's got some word searches, some funny jokes. Who doesn't like jokes? But this one had a thing on being a yak. Okay, so let's look at this yak here, okay? So he has horns, okay? And he has like really long belly fur here. So kind of like a buffalo. But it's more just kind of, you know, up on his backside and on the belly. It's not all over like the buffalo. It is a strong working type animal. Uh, people in um, like Tibet. And let's look at this country where we find these. Okay, so we're in the U.S. This is China, okay? U.S., here's Japan. U.S. would be, depending on perspective, way over here. Boop. Okay, from China. Or, boop, if you're the East Coast, way over here. Okay, but like California would be over here in proximity to China and Japan. So we have some countries. We yeah, have this country called uh, Tibet, which is on the western border of China. And the Tibetan people have used yaks for a long time. Um, you can milk them like a goat to make yak cheese, which I hear is actually pretty tasty. So I mean, and, and the people of Tibet, you know, they have you know their different um, kind of uh, ways and beliefs, and they like to use bright colors to you know decorate their little yurts and and, and their animals. It's it's not exactly sure why. Um, says you know I know there are uh, people that's rich with different you know beliefs and cultural ideas so I'm sure all these colors tie somewhere into their you know customs and beliefs so let's read a little bit how does it feel to be a yak in a long thick coat of brown or black what is it like to haul a pack over a rocky mountain okay so these are a pack animal so llamas are also seen as pack animals. Um, they use llamas a lot down in South America. This is kind of like with the horns. It kind of looks like a Texas Longhorn cow. Um, but cows we don't use as pack animals. Like a mule, a horse, a llama, or a yak. Okay. So how can you climb peaks in Tibet... Where one can see your silhouette against the rocks and ice and snow, where bitter frigid wind gusts blow. Hmm. I think this is a poet and I didn't know it. Why do you grunt? Why don't you moo or low the way that cattle do? And how long do you chew your cud? What is unique about your blood that tells you to breathe high, thin air? So high no trees can grow up there. How does it feel to be a yak in a long, thick coat of black? Okay. So these are just, you know, it, it's a poem, a cute little poem by Pat Lease. It kind of gives you a few little facts about, you know, their coat being long and black. Um, Tibet is a high plateau. So like the Great Basin, the Great Basin is kind of like a, a high plateau as well. Sorry, I had to hit a quick pause there. The phone started to ring. Sorry, somebody was at the door. Sorry. I can't even, I can't even think today. So anyway, a cute little poem by Pat Lease. Um, so a yak is a pack animal. It's about the size of a cow, but it's not a cow. It doesn't moo. Um, it breathes the high air easier. So like Tibet is a high area, kind of like the Great Basin. We don't think of the Great Basin being high because we live here and we have all these mountains around us. But... You have to think high in relation to sea level down by the oceans. So most of the Great Basin floats you know, around 5,000 feet. The Tibetan Plateau, which, you know, that's their high area, and it's got mountains around it. There again, it's like six, 7,000 feet. And 
it's going up in its little foothill mountains that are easily eight or nine thousand feet and then you've got like Everest that's up there um, so people are they're routinely crossing mountain passes around 12,000 feet going you know from one little mountain valley to another little mountain valley so you know we know that we can milk them because uh, we can make cheese in Tibet people depend upon the yak for transportation milk and cheese dried yak dung so that's their poop is used for fuel Okay, now that seems kind of funny to use and go, oh, God, those people over there are so weird. But you know what? Back, oh, 150 years ago, 180 years ago, when people were walking from the Midwest to California during the gold rush in the 1850s, um, they had their wagons and their oxen. And when they got out past the plains and away from the forest, there was no wood to burn. And they learned from the Indians that you could burn those big, dried out flat cow pies you know the poop pies um, they burn really slow and they're great at keeping mosquitoes away and no they don't smell the greatest but it is a heat source and you can make a, you know, a fire from them okay so here's our, our, our yak um, I have really no idea where this is they did not say in the bottom fine print where this picture was taken um, but it looks like you know we might have a this might be a little industrial area back here. And these look like poles that they stick up on some of the peaks and they tie like flags on them. Um, but it also comes this way. So this, this might actually be a little bit of an electric pole and not the poles that they like to tie flags to. So anyway, so there is a yak. Y-A-K. They live up high in the mountains in Tibet. And it's one of our words that starts with the letter yay so hopefully you learned something all right have a great day